All right, guys, welcome once again. If you're new to this channel, watch the video. Let me know what you think in the comments and subscribe if you enjoyed it. All right, guys, did Christ meditate? Did Christ meditate? What truly is meditation? Why is it so important as a Christian? As well as what is enlightenment? What is true enlightenment and what does that really have to do with Christianity? Um, what I'm going to share with you guys is essentially how I found out that, you know, um, Eastern religions, which most people will look to when they see an outfit like this, they go Buddhism, etc., Buddhism, stuff like that. But what you really have is you have an ancient history of a people who shared the same teaching and the translations train changed, right? And so the the tradition or the way has been, you know, covered up, right? And so generally when we think of meditation today, we think of false religions, false gods, you know, and we think of new ageism, you know, uh, you know, you are your own God, uh, worship yourself, um, you know, manifest your own destiny and all things like that, which is a play on the truth. And then they twist it on itself so that you will get the same result as if you listen to your thoughts rather than being still and observing. So, you know, in the reality, meditation is critical. You know, meditation is critical for a Christian or for anyone, a man or woman who wants to be effective uh, in life and healthy, you know, inside your soul, mind, spirit, and body, and to accomplish your destiny, which uh, I believe we don't know what that is. We don't know what our destiny is. We have our own, you know, desires and 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 lusts and ideas and everything like that. But God is the only one who really knows um, why we are here. And I believe that when we spend this time meditating and meditation and observing, um, that's when God can reveal to us, you know, his voice or what he desires us to do or accomplish in our lifetime and, and make way and open the door for our destiny. So I just want to share, you know, a couple of scriptures with you guys. And, uh, you know, I am not here teaching you. I'm just sharing, you know, my experience and what I've come to know. I'm not here to teach you. Um, a man is in no need of a teacher. Um, God is within you. And the temple of God is, is within you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the screen, guys, and um, and to share a couple of scriptures with you really quick. Uh, all right, hopefully you can see that. Um, so this is the message which we have heard of him in 1 John 1, 5, and declare unto you, this is the message of God, right? God is light, and in him is it no darkness right? So in God, there is no darkness, guys. And so God is all the light, okay? He is all the light. So what does that mean considering enlightenment, right? What does that mean considering enlightenment, okay? That means that without God, within us is darkness. Within us is being lost, a hole. Some people say, I feel like, um, you know, there's a hole in my existence and I need to fill this hole. I'm unhappy, etc. Right. Without God, we cannot see, right. We don't know what's before us, what's behind us, where to go, what we're doing, what we even look like. Right. This is deep guys. Okay. God is the light, right. He is awareness. He is the ability to be aware, to see, right? To come to life, right? Okay, so let's go deeper, all right? So now Christ says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world, right? What does that mean? As long as he is in the world, he is the light of the world, all right? Well, we know that Christ uh, was crucified. We know that he's living eternal, Right. But as long as he's in the world, he's the light of the world. What that means 
is the enlightened one, right? The son of God. As long as he is in the world, he will light up the whole world as a son of God because he is full of the entire light of God. He is completed. He is in completion. As a son of God, he is full of light and has zero darkness. Therefore, he is the light of the world as long as he is in it. Once they remove his physical body, all right, he is still in a sense a light of the world, but he's not there for people to see and go, oh, look, right? They have to go deeper within, right? The spiritual world now, okay? And so, you know, this is God, the Father, and Christ, the Son. You know, hopefully you're starting to see just the idea of enlightenment, what I also call second kush, um, which maybe I'll deal with in another video, because we have first kush, um, which is essentially Africa, you know, the Kushites, Amos 9-7, right? And then out of original Africa, the original land, right, uh, Eden, we go to second kush, which was India um, and Asia, which you'll find in first Esther, right? And so this is where this Buddhism comes from, Buddhism, right? Buddhism to flower, you know what I'm saying? From within out to flower, right? The meditation to observe, to be a witness of God, right? Observation to observe then makes you a witness and a bystander of, of God rather than a, a, a participant for yourself or for others or for the deceiver, but instead an observer of God to witness what God is going to do in this world through you and other people. Okay. So, you know, that's Christ saying that he is that, right? He is the light of the world, the sum of all light from God. And what is that? But to be a mediator, right? A mediator, to mediate, to be in the middle or to intercede, which I hope you guys are seeing how this all ties together, right? This all ties together because mediator, meditator, right? You got the same letters in there. You just remove one T, meditator, mediator. In the meditation in which that God instructs us through Christ is observation to observe and let the Holy Spirit cry into the utterings for you and to observe the thoughts and let them go, right? So to uh, essentially become like Christ in yourself, right? To mediate, right? To mediate and to be in the middle to witness, right? So that you can then do his work in the physical world. I hope you guys are receiving this, man. This is some powerful stuff, right? And then so Christ says, then spake Jesus unto them saying, I am the light of the world and he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life there it's so clear you know because again christ has re he reached enlightenment in light attainment in light attainment he achieved the full spectrum right full graduation and transformation into the immortal light body right and so those who follow christ right, who become an observer and a witness to their thoughts and to the reality of this world and allow God to do his will through their life, we will not walk in darkness any longer. We will not be lost any longer, all right? But we, we will have the light within us. We can walk with the light. We can allow God to, we can submit to God this way to allow God to work in our life. And the same metaphor is with a man and a woman. If a woman doesn't know what a man's going to do and she's full of fear instead of faith, she's going to cut that man off before he has a chance to show her what he's capable of right? Or what his plan is, she'll be too worried in her mind that she'll do something to destroy it before then, right? It's the same with the man, your car break down or whatever, and you're freaking out before God can do something. You're, you're not submitting to God in that faith, right? So those who walk after Christ in this meditation, this third person objective, you know, observing and witnessing, right? Um, we shall walk and we shall have the light of life, right? So that light that replenishes life and even gives life, eternal life, okay? So in this example, guys, uh, most of you guys have heard this, when, you know, Christ was getting to that point where he knew his time was coming, where he's, his, his life was about to end, um, at least this incarnation, and, um, you know, and he felt the groanings of his spirit, and so he knew he had to go meditate. He knew he had to go be objective of his emotions, and he had to witness, um, 
himself and what's going on and what the will of God is. And so he felt that strong, you know, pull because he already knew what was coming. And so he brought some of his brethren to come as well and to meditate, right? Okay, so he says, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tarry you here. Remember, it says that the, the husband man is tarrying, right? So this has something to do with that, the tarrying, right, to, to the spiritual battle, right? Tarry you here. So he says, y'all tarry here and watch with me, mean be ob uh, uh, objective, witness with me. Be here and meditate here and fight spiritually in the battle in this meditation, right? Tarry here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and he prayed, saying, oh, my father, be possible. Take this cup, pass for me. And nevertheless, not as I will, but that is as thou will. So that's what he entered in saying. He's saying he knows, he's asking this, he knows that it's his will, it's God's will, not his own, right? And so then we find out that after that, time has passed, meditation has gone about, right? He allowed the, his Holy Spirit to commune with God. And he cometh unto the disciples and found them sleeping and said unto P Peter, what, could you not watch with me even one hour? And so it was probably an hour, maybe a little bit more in which Christ was meditating. And when he came to check on his brethren to see if they were watching, you know, observing, he found out that they were asleep after one hour, which means that um, they're too much in their, their, their body, right? It's a, if you're too much in your mind, um, you won't be able to find that peace in your thoughts. And if you're in your body, you're going to relax and go to sleep. But if you're not in your body or your mind, you're just observing, you won't fall asleep and you won't be in your mind. You'll be at that peaceful place. Okay, so watch and pray that ye enter not in temptation, right? The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, so there you go. So the spirit knows. Okay, um, this is, you know, I'm going to do a video about this, but essentially, um, you know, this is how you build your spiritual energy, your spiritual light. This is how you gain more light, right? This is how you do more will of God, right? laser beam light okay so third person i just want to share with you guys third person or objective perspective makes you neutral okay this is makes you neutral okay and that's that's what you want to be because the battle is a spiritual battle all right there's nothing we can do of ourselves. we need to be neutral so that god can fill our cup and do his will through us right when we're not neutral we're going to take it personal all right. And then we're not going to be able to hear God or have him reveal. We're going to take everything personal and turn away from God, really. OK, so I hope this is all making sense, guys, with mediation, a meditator, observation, witness, the, the objective third uh, perspective. Right. Because most people have heard of the pineal gland. I know you guys can't. There we go. Hopefully you can see me. I know you guys have heard of the pineal gland. And it's, it's in your scripture. There's so much more in the scripture that has been hidden by the Illuminati Francis Bacon, who is the original one who, who translated the King James Version, and he is a Rosicrucian Illuminati. All right, guys? So you, you don't want to be really into these books reading to know God. Um, you want to go on yourself and know God, and then he'll make you understand all the scriptures and et cetera if uh, you, know, you wanted to go ahead and check those out. Again, I'm not your teacher. I'm only sharing with you guys, okay? So here it is, Abraham, right? Abraham talking. And he says, you know, uh, pineal is a place of meeting with God, right? And it talks about, uh, excuse me, Jacob. Um, Jacob encounter with God at pineal or pineal, right? And you can look up that word as well. And, you know, it's only recently through science and all their biological studies that they found out about the pineal gland, which is the third eye that has like a, a retina cornea and a lens or whatever, right here in the center of your brain, right? Which the new age ism is trying to take over and turn into satanic, you know, witchcraft and all these other things. But these things are, have been created by God. God created us, right? And these are the things that he instilled in us. So what God created is not evil in and of itself, all right? So the pineal gland is your third eye. And according to Jacob is when he met God, is when he was still and meditated observation. And when you do this, guys, the easiest way is to be still, be in your breath, and then to observe here. Don't look up or down, just to observe in your mind right above your eyes, right? And you begin to stimulate your pineal gland. 
okay? And, and that is what, according to Jacob, is the face of God. And also we know that from your pineal gland, when you die, when you're born and you have spiritual experiences, your pineal gland is activated in dimethyltryptamine, okay? So it is what some people call the spirit molecule or where your spirit and soul, you know, may meet or come together, okay? And that again is your third eye, right? The objective witness, observing, okay? To witness from the pineal gland, your inner eye out instead of these ones being blind, okay? And I'm just gonna end this guys with uh, the sun shall no more be thy light, neither for brightness nor uh, shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee as an everlasting light and a God thy glory, all right? So for those of you who are still a little unsure about that, um, guys, uh, just know that that means that we will need no more external light, that light will shine from within out for all to see. What a glorious thing to take a part of, guys. Do your training and preparation now and be still and know that God is in control and not you, so you can get out your head and into your heart. Love you guys. And hope you enjoyed this. If you did, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and have a blessed day, guys. Until next time, you know, love you, Rastafari. Bless.